Thank you for attending today's webinar on the launch of the EventScribe 2.0 Websites product. Um, for those of you who are not Cabium CD clients, thank you very much for joining. And for those of you that are clients who may or may not be using our EventScribe websites, thank you as well for uh, joining this webinar. Now, because some of you are not clients, we're going to do a brief introduction to the Cadmium product line and explain where the EventScribe website's product sits within what Cadmium CD does. So Cadmium CD has been in the event industry for over 15 years. And over time, we've grown to be a company that services meeting planners a full year out from a meeting with products like the Abstract Scorecard for abstract submission and review, and the conference harvester for booth rentals and sponsorship sales, through to speaker management and exhibitor management, and finally on to the blue products at the bottom of this page, which are for attendees, exhibitor floor plans, itinerary planner, mobile app, e-posters, evaluations, speaker ready room, that kind of thing. So Cadmium CD is a, is a technology vendor in the event industry, and we work with meeting planners with a verti vertically integrated suite of products that you can work with throughout the entire year, a year out from your conference, and even servicing your attendees after the conference with uh, products like the conference proceedings or the evaluations. So where does the EventScribe websites fit into that? It's the three squares that we have um, highlighted on this slide. So EventScribe websites, that's a platform for having an itinerary planner for your attendees to plan what they're going to do at your event. It could be a conference microsite, the entire website for your event, not just the schedule, not just the exhibitors, but the other information that you need to disseminate to the attendees as they prepare to come. And lastly, it can be a conference proceedings, a mechanism to share conference materials with your client, with your attendees after the event, whether it's PDF files or slides or something more ambitious like audio recordings where the slides are synchronized with the audio that we've recorded on site. So we're going to talk about Eventscribe websites today. We have been doing Eventscribe websites for the past five years. We launched it in 2011 and we have spent much of 2016 refining our engine so that we could relaunch it with a lot more capabilities than we had before and what today's webinar is really about is going through what are the key reasons that you would want to use Eventscribe for an event website you know what makes it different when you work with Cadmium CD so Let's get started. This is an example of a website that we have created on the Eventscribe platform. This one is for an event later this month, and the focus of this event is purely as an itinerary planner. Its sole reason to be is that it shows you a very complicated schedule with a thousand items, many speakers, and it allows the attendee to efficiently plan what they're going to do at the show. And if there's one thing you take away from this webinar, it is that the core benefit of going with an event scribe event website is that we know how to do schedule browsing really, really well. And that that schedule is intimately integrated with our speaker data management platform, which we call the Conference Harvester. And if you want to have your attendees experience it on mobile, it works equally well on tablets and phones. This is that same website on a smaller screen on an iPhone 6, and you can see it makes great use of the real estate and maintains a clean design, which is easy to consume. Here's an example of a more ambitious conference proceedings. Uh, this conference is very much focused on networking. So there are a lot of components here um, that involve attendee to attendee interaction, whether it's seeing the attendees who have favorited a presentation or getting access to the full list of attendees so that you can reach out to the ones that have indicated that they are open to being communicated to from other attendees. And you can actually email them directly engage in an online chat, that kind of thing. And lastly, here's an example of um, both an itinerary planner and a proceedings. So attendees used this prior to the conference uh, to plan their itinerary 
see what exhibitors were exhibiting. But after the conference, it's also the platform where attendees can get PDFs of all the available slides, as well as 200 hours of audio recordings. So as they browse through the same schedule that they browse through to plan their trip, they can go back to the same place, pull up their favorites, and access the audio recordings that are now available after the conference. And those recordings will be online for the next five years. So, what does integration with the Conference Harvester mean? So the Conference Harvester is our event data management product. You can use it to manage both your educational schedule as well as your exhibition and sponsors. And in the case of the education schedule, this screen here is an example of what it looks like where you are viewing a presentation and you can edit the various properties of that presentation, whether it's the abstract, the learning objectives, the speaker list, and the real power of the Harvester is that all the speakers can log in to the Harvester and contribute the information through a simple task-based system, uh, which is easy for them and makes it even easier for you. Because I think as many of you know, if you do integrations with multiple technology vendors, there's inevitably hiccups that come along along the way and some surprises. But in the case of the Harvester, when your speakers log in and submit materials, that data, because we do the, both the Harvester and EventScribe, that data is automatically available on the EventScribe website. So if you have an itinerary planner and a speaker logs in and they supplement their profile with some social media information, maybe they uh, update their biography and add a photo, that information is immediately available on the itinerary planner. And the EventScribe package can include a mobile app as well if you purchase that. And so that same data automatically updates on the mobile app as well. So it means you don't have to deal with integration hassles when you have some kind of change, whether it's initiated by you as an administrator or by a speaker themselves, it automatically carries through uh, into the EventScribe platform. And speakers absolutely love the Harvester. Uh, this slide here is a screenshot that I took just before this presentation from the Harvester website where we post the feedback that's coming into the system. And you can see some feedback there from the past few days, um, which uh, I think it's safe to say that's a great attestation by how the speakers uh, use and appreciate the conference Harvester. Um, and I think the one on the right really sums it up. I quote, it seems to me that the Harvester website is the most complete information collector that I have ever entered information into. So speakers love it. It's easy for you because the data goes directly to the attendees. And you can use the Harvester for your exhibition and sponsors as well. This screenshot here shows an, uh, a task list. These are tasks that are being asked of the exhibitors to complete. It shows you how complete each task is. Um, and of course, you can click on a task and send an email to just the companies who have not yet completed that task. So it's just as easy for exhibitors as well. And here's an example of some feedback that we received earlier this year from an exhibitor who was contributing information in that would eventually flow right into the EventScribe website. So it says, I do and do... I, do, I plan and do logistics for over 200 trade shows and meetings each year. I've never used any system that's as simple as Harvester. I wish every show used this system. So as you can see, easy for exhibitors as well. And so when they submit their description or their company information or they submit their logo, those things automatically flow into the itinerary planner. And in particular, for logos and speaker photos, we hand edit every single speaker photo that comes in and every single logo. We uh, do it so that the photos look consistently the same size and zoom level. And we do it for the logo so that we can optimize both the quality of the logos as well as make sure they're consistently sized. So when multiple logos are shown on the same screen, we don't have some that are disproportionately large. Another advantage of going with EventScribe websites is it's directly integrated with our survey magnet product. So attendees can use the survey magnet to take evaluations or quizzes and get certificates. So if they're logged into the EventScribe website, they've got one click access into the evaluation system. And just like EventScribe websites, it works equally well on both a mobile device and a PC. You can see on the screenshot here, the iPhone shows a complete attendance certificate um, right on the phone, and it's accessed by going to the itinerary planner, logging in, 
clicking on the evaluations button and then accessing both the evaluations and the certificate of attendance right from their phone. So it's really convenient. And that's becoming more and more important now that conferences and event planners are starting to move away from having kiosks at the conference to do evaluations and enabling attendees to do all of that on their mobile phone. So with direct integration between the survey tool and the website, it basically means one less integration for you to worry about because it's all in one fluid system. We also have seamless syncing with our mobile app. So we have Eventscribe websites, but for on-site use, we also have a mobile app that is a separate product, and they use the same data. So instead of you having to deal with people logging into your website and maybe making favorites, and then you get a mobile app vendor, but the app doesn't have the favorites, with Eventscribe, it's all one ecosystem. It's all the same data structure. So when someone logs in with their website account into the mobile app, all of their favorites carry through automatically. Speaker favorites, presentation favorites, exhibitor favorites, attendee favorites. You can see on the left, that's the Eventscribe website being shown on a tablet. You've got the uh, personal schedule of an attendee there. And then on the right with the iPhone, that's a personal schedule of uh, the same personal schedule right in the mobile app. And it automatically syncs. If you were to unfavorite it on the app, it's unfavorited on the event Eventscribe website and vice versa. Uh, so uh, makes it really simple for attendees and convenient because now all their favorites are on both places and you don't have to deal with an integration between two different vendors to make that happen, which may or may not work. Integrations aren't a sure thing and they certainly aren't simple. We also make it really easy to get to the Eventscribe app from an Eventscribe website. So this is an example of a banner that you can have displayed on your website. It's got a lot of convenient ways to get to the app, links to the Google Play Store and the App Store where the app is, a universal QR code that can be scanned on both an Android device and an Apple device. On an Apple device, the QR code will go to the app in the App Store, and on an Android device, it will go to the Google Play Store and to the app listing there. So it understands what device it's being scanned on and automatically routes the user. There's a bit.ly link for people that need to type in a link to get to it. And lastly, my favorite one is an attendee can actually type in their phone number and have a link to the app texted to them. And when they get the text, all they have to do is click on the text and they're automatically taken to the App Store on an iOS device or the Google Play Store on an Android device where they can download the app. So it makes it super convenient. Now we do a really nice job with the new website um, platform of enabling attendees to network with each other. So when they're a first time user, they're asked two simple questions. One is about sharing their information with other attendees. The other one um, is about do they wanna share their schedule or their favorites with the other attendees. And once they answer those two questions, the system acts appropriately so that if they choose to share everything, then if they favorite a presentation and another attendee is looking at that presentation, they can see that that person favorited it and they can see that person's profile with whatever information they chose to share. Attendee discovery is really easy. We do a really nice job of making it simple to see the attendee list and search through them. So I just kind of walk you through the parts on this screenshot here. On the top right is a search box where you can type in anything about an attendee, their name, their city, their state, their country, part of their biography. Um, and as you type, the list filters automatically. Every letter you type, the list gets shorter and shorter until you find the person or people that you're looking for. On the left-hand side, we have filters, names, city, state, country, organization. You can use any combination of those filters in whatever order you want. The idea is if you click on a filter like country, you're going to see buckets of attendees in alphabetical order by country. So if you were looking for all the people from Brazil, you could click on Brazil and see the three or four people that were coming to the conference from Brazil. In the case of this screenshot, we've got it bucketed by state. Arkansas is first. We've expanded it here, and you can see the three people that came from Arkansas. The alphabet bar below allows you to quickly move through the list. That's very helpful, of course, when there are a lot of people um, at the conference, and we don't want to have 20,000 names on the same page. Um, this is a great way to quickly find people. And of course, when you click on someone's name, you're going to get a really nice profile that shows everything about that particular speaker. 
So in this case, they chose to share their phone numbers, um, and they actually contributed, um, sorry, this attendee, they actually contributed a full biography as well. Um, this particular conference is one that's really big on networking, so we have a lot of attendees that give full profiles. You'll notice that they shared their LinkedIn page, um, and the, uh, the chain link icon is their website. Uh, you'll see at the top, you can email that attendee just by clicking on the email button, and you can even engage in an online chat with them. So it makes it really easy to discover attendees and see whatever depth they've put into their online profile. And of course, all that information is also available in the Eventscribe app. The two share the same information. So all of these profiles that get contributed by the attendees in the lead up to the conference are then also available um, in the mobile app when they're at the conference. And if you choose to favorite an attendee on the itinerary planner, they're automatically in your favorited attendees in the app, which makes it really convenient when you're on site. Browsing exhibitors is also really simple. It never ceases to amaze me how many conference websites have a poor exhibitor listing. Um, just like you saw on the attendee list, you've got an instant search bar in the top right. As you type, the list gets smaller. Um, and uh, we can list them by booth, by company, by category. Um, we can show the logos in the list like it shows here if you want to. All the logos are available in super high quality because in the Harvester, we force all of the companies to submit vector graphics and then we hand edit every single logo to make sure it looks great. When you click through onto a booth profile, as you can see here, it's a really clean look, really easy to take in. Um, and we'll show whatever information the exhibitor has submitted. Um, and if you favorite this exhibitor, it will automatically show up on the mobile app, which is really helpful because in the mobile app, you can go to the floor plan and see all of your favorites highlighted in yellow. So you can visually see exactly where you want to walk to on the floor plan. And as you do that and visit each booth, you can click on the booth on the app's floor plan and then mark it off as visited. And then it shows up as green on your map. So as a well-informed attendee walking around, you may have 20 booths you want to hit. You see them in yellow. As you go to each one, you mark them off and they turn green. So it's really clear where you've got to go in the exhibit hall for the booths you haven't yet chosen to visit that were on your hit list. You can even in the app, click on the booth and record a short audio message as you're walking away from the booth to summarize your conversation with the representatives at the booth. And that shows up in your personal summary. So it makes for a really pleasant experience for attendees who chose to engage at that level um, with creating a plan and then executing that plan when they're on site. Speaker profiles are extremely rich in the new Eventscribe website platform. Just like those other list views, you have a search box, you have filters. You know, if you wanted to see, well, what speakers come from what organizations, you just click on the organization filter and you're bucketing the speakers by organization. And once you click through onto a speaker, you get a rich profile showing whatever the speaker has chosen to submit. That profile can be formatted different ways. So you can see a couple of different styles here. The one on the left has the speaker social media and photo on the left with all of the text information on the right. Whereas the profile on the right side of this screen shows a more centered approach where it's photo, name, position, organization, biography. So a little more of a, you know, just a, a different way of displaying the same data. Um, all the photos, like we said earlier, are hand edited in the Harvester. Uh, we have people that basically run through those all day, um, just editing the photos and making sure they look great, better than what was submitted by the speaker. Um, and uh, of course, it's all live edited. So if Karen Hoffman logged in and changed her biography, it's instantly changed on the itinerary planner as well. There's different ways pop-ups can be formatted. This screenshot shows a few different style changes. Um, you can see at the top we've changed the styling of the head um, so that it is more similar to the older style that we did for our itinerary planners uh, and websites. And uh, it should be noted that um, I'm illustrating this just to show you that there are a number of ways you can change the appearance of the content. Uh, there are actually about 300 settings that describe how the website lays out and how the color schemes um, and styles are executed. Uh, we have a brand new settings page with uh, the ability to just type in something at the top 
and you can search for the setting you're looking for and it will highlight it for you so you can find it quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that kind of leads me to talk about, you know, what's your role in setting up the website? Um, and that's something that's very important for you to understand if you're not someone who already uses an Eventscribe website. So this is not a product like WordPress where you do 100% of the work. Um, it's also not a product where we do all the work for you. It's really an amalgam between the two. There's things we do to set it up, setting up the basic navigational structure and giving you a good start to the settings. But we're often editing the settings that you can edit yourself and we'll work with you for how much you want to be engaged in all of that. Um, certainly there's some things we would, would need you to do. So if there are static pages that show things like hotel and travel information, you'll have tools to edit those directly yourself. When it comes to things like the layout on one of these presentation pop-ups, there are things you can control for it and there's things we can control. But the important thing is that this kind of hybrid approach of both of us sharing and controlling the design of the site means that we can give you a lot of customization. So if you wanted to have the presentation number after the presentation title in parentheses, we can do that. If you wanted to change the style that we show the room information in, if you wanted to change the order that the data is shown on one of these pop-ups, if you wanted to change not just showing tracks in those little red bubbles, but you wanted to show categories and topics and uh, things like that, we have tons of flexibility to work in those kind of changes so that we can create a site that both mimics your brand equity for your event as well as shows all of the information for your for your data. Um, and that, of course, is so important because all conferences have different types of data and different depths. You know, some have only you know just an abstract, a title, a date and time. Others may need to display 10 or 12 unique fields on the presentation pop-up in a way that's um, similar to the print material. Um, and so we work with you to design the layout of these and really make it so it showcases your data in the way it should be shown. We can do the same thing for poster information, whether it's just showing abstracts for posters or actually showing the e-posters themselves and getting direct access for the attendees to see the e-poster inside the itinerary planner. And of course, we handle content links really well. Whether it's as simple as having one PDF file for all of the presentations, or it's more complicated than that, where you need to have PDF files for each individual speaker. In the case of this particular screenshot, we're showing both slides um, as one slide per page, and then another button for each speaker, six slides per page. Um, we can, of course, have links to MP3 audio recordings, slides synchronized with audio. We can have um, just strict videos of sessions available. Um, so lots of different content options, um, and they can be displayed to the attendees in different ways, and we can control their access to it. So we can control access simply by having an attendee have an account that is at one of three levels, which we uh, call basic, standard, and premium. Or we can control it more finely with a concept that we call unlock codes, where different presentations have unlock codes. And if an attendee has that code ingrained, embedded in their account, then they automatically get access to it. So classic use cases, if you've got pre-conference workshops and maybe for one of the workshops, there's 100 attendees that can access it, they would have an unlock code in their account for that workshop. They would be able to access the slides but people who didn't go to the workshop would not be able to. And that makes it really easy for you and for us to control access on an attendee by attendee basis and make it so attendees can see the right information. But for the stuff that they don't have access to, of course, they can't do that. And all of that carries through into the mobile app as well so that they can access the same limited amount of information in the app as they can on the itinerary planner. So you can see on this screen a list of attendees who have chosen to favorite a presentation. Um, it'll show them um, in whatever order you want, whether it's chronological, alphabetical, um, but you'll see those attendees um, who have chosen to share their um, schedules with other people. And when you click on them, you can see the profile that they've shared as well. So in the case of Kiara here, you can see that she's got a very rich profile with a number of social media links, a biography. And we even had a couple of questions on this particular planner that were asked of the attendees when they logged in. And so those questions and answers 
display on their profile as well. And of course, this makes it great for discovering who's going to be in a session with you and reaching out to them ahead of the session if you want to. Now, the browsing tools are um, for presentations in particular are awesome on the new planner. So you can get, of course, a simple chronological listing with the search as you type at the top, but we can introduce a number of different filters, really as many as you need, onto the page to allow attendees to filter the schedule just with a few clicks to find things that are relevant for them. In this particular case, they're doing it by track level and presentation type. And if you click on the More Options button, you can get to another level of, of, of things to filter the schedule by. Uh, this is another conference where they've got it done by subject, library type, meeting type, and what they call the unit, uh, which is kind of like a division within their association. Um, and you can see because this is a very large schedule with over 1,400 items on it, they've got tabs along the top for the days so that you can drill down into a particular day without having everything else on the page. So the bottom line is for attendees, whatever ways you need to categorize your presentation schedule, we can build that into the browsing experience for the attendees and allow them to discover things efficiently and not have to view the whole schedule or be limited to just a few ways to view it. We're very flexible with setting these up. I touched on this a little bit before. Um, favoriting is really one of the most important parts of an itinerary planner. So when we're using EventScribe as a planner, um, you can have a My Schedule section that's live, and that's where the attendee can get access to their favorites for presentations, presenters, attendees, exhibitors, posters, poster presenters, um, and access them all on one page, and of course, export them in different ways. So, you know, every attendee has a different way they want it. We'll support PDF, Microsoft Word, Excel, export to your Outlook calendar, and of course, direct integration with the EventScribe app. All of the favorites that you have will show up on the app as well. And that's, that's really important for attendees because they can get really frustrated if they build a schedule and then when they get to the end of that experience, they realize that the way they want to use the schedule is not available to them. So multi-device appearance is really important. And this is one of the biggest changes on the new EventScribe websites. You can see here this side-by-side -side shot showing a phone in the foreground with an iPad in the background. And certainly the iPad displays it in a way that is very similar to the way it's displayed on a PC. Um, but the important takeaway here is you can see just how close the phone looks to the tablet and the PC experience. Uh, we do an awesome job of using the maximum amount of space on the phone in a way that doesn't look cluttered, looks consistent with the PC experience. Um, and is very easy to browse around. And, you know, this screenshot is, you know, symbolic of the rest of the whole website where it's just a super pleasant experience on a small screen like a phone. Here's another shot showing an attendee list so you can see how the pop-up is uh, manifested on the phone. You can see how it does a great job of using the available screen size um, to show things in a way that's still very readable, still very consumable, um, and certainly um, a really attractive appearance of um, just the interface to the attendees, so it's just a pleasure to use. So with that, we've come to the end of the introduction. Um, there's obviously a lot to take in with what you can do with an EventScribe website. But I think what I'll leave you with is that, you know, the core reason to go with Cadmium CD for some sort of an event website, whether it's an itinerary planner or it is uh, a conference proceedings or even a full microsite for your event is its deep integration across all of our products. So you can collect abstracts a year out from your event, which are accepted and moved into the speaker harvester. The speakers will engage and submit material and all that material can be made automatically available on the EventScribe website platform, which automatically syncs with the mobile app. So you've really got a vertical integration across all of the key um, technologies that we, you would use to manage this data. Now, in terms of um, pricing, obviously, this isn't the sort of webinar where we go into that. Um, but I will say that for EventScribe websites, we categorize them at three different levels, express, 
Standard, and Pro. And different features are available in those three levels at, a, at different prices. So if you feel like you want to learn more about whether or not an EventScribe website is right for your event, uh, please feel free to contact me and I can put you in contact with one of our sales reps to talk through some potential solutions for you to see if there's something that works for your event. And thank you very much for taking the time to listen and learn more about our product line. Uh, thank you.